on religion, do you think there will ever be a time in our future where almost nobody believes in God or um, God is not a part of the moral fabric of our society? Yes, I do. I think it may happen after a very long time. I think it may take a long time for that to happen. So do you think ultimately for everybody on earth, religion, the other forms of doctrines, ideas could do better job than what religion does? Yes. Um, I mean, following truth. Uh, well, tr truth is a funny, funny word. Uh, and, and reason too. Uh, there's yeah it's a, it's a it's a difficult idea now with um truth on the internet right and fake news and so on i suppose when you say reason you mean the very basic sort of inarguable conclusions of science versus which political system is better y yes example. yes uh, i'm i mean uh truth about the real world which is ascertainable um by not just by the more rigorous methods of science but by um, just ordinary sensory observation. So do you think there will ever be a time when we move past it? Like, I guess another way to ask it, are we hopelessly, fundamentally tied to religion in the way our society functions? Well, clearly all individuals are not hopelessly tied to it because many individuals don't believe. Um, you could mean something like Society needs religion in order to function properly, something right. like that. And some people have suggested that. Some What's your intuition on that? Well, I've read books on, on it um, and they're persuasive. I, I don't think they're that persuasive though. I mean, I, some people suggested that society needs a sort of figurehead, which can be a non-existent figurehead in order to function properly. I think there's something rather patronizing about the idea that well, you and I are intelligent enough not to believe in God, but the, the plebs need it sort of thing. I mean, I think that's patronizing. And uh, I'd like to think that, that that was not the right way to proceed. But at the individual level, do you think there's some value of spirituality? Sort of, uh, if, if I think sort of as a scientist, the amount of things we actually know about our universe is a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of what we could possibly know. So just from everything, even the certainty we have about the laws of physics, it seems to be that there's yet a huge amount to discover. And therefore we're sitting where 99.999% of things is just still shrouded in mystery. Do you think there's a role in a kind of spiritual view of that, sort of a humbled spiritual? I think it's right to be humble. I think it's right to admit that there's a lot we don't know, a lot that we don't understand, a lot that we still need to work on. Yeah. We're working on it. What I don't think is that it helps to invoke supernatural explanations. What we, if, our, if our current scientific explanations aren't adequate to do the job, then we need better ones. We need to work more. And of course, the history of science shows just that, that as science goes on, uh, problems get solved one after another, and the science advances, the science gets better. Uh, but to invoke an a non-scientific, non-physical explanation is simply to lie down in a cowardly way and say, we can't solve it, so we're going to invoke magic. Don't let's do that. Let's say we need better science. We need more science. Uh, it may be that the science will never do it. It may be that we will never actually understand everything. And that's okay, but let's keep working on it. A challenging question there is, do you think science can lead us astray in terms of the humbleness? So there's some aspect of science, maybe it's the aspect of scientists and not science, but uh, of sort of um, a mix of ego and confidence that can lead us astray in terms of discovering the, um, you know, some of the big open questions about yes uh, about the universe. I think that's right. I mean, there are there are arrogant people in any walk of life, and sure. scientists are no exception to that. And so there are arrogant scientists who think we've solved everything, and of course we haven't. So humility is a proper stance for a scientist. Yeah. I mean, it's a proper working stance because it encourages further work. Um, but in a way to resort to a supernatural explanation is a kind of arrogance because it's saying, well, we don't understand it scientifically, therefore the uh, non-scientific religious 
supernatural explanation must be the right one. That's arrogant. What is what is humble is to say we don't know, and we need to work further on it. So maybe if I could psychoanalyze you for a second, <laughs> you have at times been just slightly frustrated with people who have super, you know, have a supernatural. Um, has that changed over the years? Have you become like? How do people that kind of have like uh, seek supernatural explanations? How do you see those people as human beings? As it's like, do you see them as dishonest? Do you see them as um, sort of uh, ignorant? Do you see them as I don't know? Is it like what? No, what I mean, how do you think of certainly not 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 dishonest? And 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 I mean, obviously, many of them are perfectly nice people. So I don't I don't sort of despise them in that sense. Um, I think it's often a misunderstanding that that um, people will jump from the admission that we don't understand something. They will jump straight to what they think of as an alternative explanation, which is the supernatural one, which is not an alternative. It's a non-explanation. Um, instead of jumping to the conclusion that Science needs more work. That we need to actually get do some better better science. So um, I, I I don't have I mean personal antipathy towards such people. I just think they're they're misguided. <laughs>